All right. Undoubtedly, the film director is a storyteller. Whether narrative or documentary, the filmmaker must shape image and sound to create a compelling story for his or her audience. Oftentimes, films are based, at least partly in fact, taking people and events from reality and portraying them on the screen. These movies can be some of the best the industry has to offer. Four of this, four of this past year's Best Picture Academy Award nominees, including the winner for Best Picture, The King's Speech, were based on true stories. Um, of all the aspects a director must consider when making a film, the choice of actors and the shaping of memorable, memorable performances is possibly his, the most important. With fact-based films and biographic films, a director must work with the actor to authentically portray a real person. So, what is, the, what is the director and actor's process when creating a character based in reality? How much does the director care to remain faithful to the real person? How much does he or she deviate from fact to create a greater story and character? I'm joined by fellow directors Thomas Mary, Thomas Golterman, and Katrina Meyer to answer some of these questions. The first thing when a director sees a project that's based in fact, whether it's someone, someone from history, so, uh, some, some compelling individual, or if it's a story, they're drawn to it, and for, for whatever reason they want to tell that story. So that at some point they want to be faithful to these characters that they're going to portray. Mm -hmm. And I guess is the, the question is how, from there, how much do they want to dilute it to make it a story that's sellable yeah. and a story that's something that people will want to see, I guess. Yeah. Or hyper-realistic in that aspect of taking a bunch of s events of someone's stories or other people's stories and throw it into one literally clusterfuck yeah. situation. I'm Not There would be, a, is that what the cool. film on Bob Dylan? I think so. I feel like that, that's a good yeah. example of what you what you're sort of talking about there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But um, well, let's start. Like, I mean, let's start start off with well, the film and maybe we'll pick it apart. I think. Know? I think the other thing though too, when you when you're talking about that, it like the fighter for example, when you watch the fighter, I, I watched all those events that happened in real time. Mm -hmm. I wasn't really interested in watching a movie on something I had already seen, but then to throw in other characteristics of the story, like the mom and the brother doing drugs and all that other stuff and made a great movie. So I think it's kind of interesting how, how you don't, how do you show something that really happened and get somebody to watch it again, feeling yeah. the same way or even feeling better I about it. I think in that case too, you, you got more of behind the scenes, right. rather than, because all you really saw was just out in the ring. Why? Well, just the sport. My favorite it. moment in that movie was when uh, <coughs> Sanchez got knocked down. Yeah. I, your hair raises up and on your back during that, Fight and I watched that fight live, and it was better in the movie, which is because <laughs> that whole because you had a, a good hour and a half building up to that, and you right. invested in all these characters and yeah. stuff, which I think you had a relation yeah. to it more so. For, which I is mean, what you have to do. Yeah, I didn't yeah. follow the whole Mickey mm -hmm. events when I was younger or anything like that, and probably would have since I do watch fighting now, but. Yeah, I thought the fighter was very well done. Yeah, I, I didn't even see the events live at all, and I didn't even I I'll be honest, I didn't even know it was based on a real person when it first came out. I, that's how ignorant I was. But uh, after no, seeing no. it, I thank you. Uh, <laughs> after seeing it, I I thought it was brilliant, and then when I found out it was ba it was on a true story, I was even more blown away because it just it looked so it, it was very convincing and it was very real. So. Well, I guess since we're already on the fighter too, we can just toss up an example for everyone to hear about the process between director and actor. And I've, I was actually able to speak with David Russell about The Fighter. Hmm. I was lucky enough to a, f a few weeks ago in New York City. And um, it's, it started with the script even, where he saw the script and uh, he, he didn't really like it because he felt it wasn't true to who these people were. And for instance, the character Dickie Youngland, he, the way it was written, he was more of a sort of the tormented drug addict. and. David O. Russell saw him as more of a charmer and a, a nice guy, and he just happened to have a, a serious problem. And that's exactly how Christian Bale also saw the character, and that's what led to him being casted. And if you look, if you look at that movie, I don't. If you told him as like the tormented drug addict, we're all supposed to feel sorry for, it, it, it wouldn't work too. And and especially yeah. if you, in that in that uh, the DVD special features, if you actually see the the real Dick Youngling, he is yeah. a, a straight charmer. He's a very charismatic man. Mm -hmm. So well, and that was I think that's an actually, instance of staying faithful to to the real person rather than maybe ad, yeah. adding stuff or taking away, and there's a there's a certain factor too because I know the real the real people were on set a lot during the, the that film mm -hmm. and they were they were often getting kind of pissed because they didn't want these events shown 
which which leads me to believe that he was actually telling the true events and and maybe they weren't the nicest events to tell well, and how they wanted to see themselves but that's how they were and that's how he wanted to tell it i think with every true event that you do retell there's something different mm -hmm. no matter what there's always something that's different whether it's the sun's not shining right or one different word that could have affected something else and i could i could see just from my personal standpoint from watching a movie that was recently that i wrote about a past experience and watching an art director's interpre interpretation on that and just watching a different line or a different whatever in there that's not what really happened but it yeah. still gets the moment out yeah and i think that's with dickie ecklin and all those guys sitting on set they probably saw something well that that's not how it really happened that way well or and even how or even how the line is delivered it can be the exact same line right. exact same people are present but how that line is delivered right. changes the result of everything I mean, it's the repercussions. I mean, you say, oh, you're just an asshole. Jokingly means something else. You're a fucking asshole. Right. Changes the entire meaning. It's the deliver, deliver um, on the line and everybody's cause and effect of those actions within it. Yeah. So whether it's true form, one way written, or true form delivered via the director's um, Vision. Vision, thank you. I'm like, how am I forgetting vision <laughs> out of all things? Um, director's vision of to merge those two things, you're going to strike conflict in something because the director didn't live that life. You could pick apart. Yep. Um, I mean, you can speak more because you spoke to the director and so forth. I mean, how did he honestly approach it with Christian Bale? Um, oh, and Chris, Christian Bale, to, to my knowledge, was not left alone, but he was certainly given a lot of freedom and he. What he did was he fo he followed the real person he was portraying ar around okay. a lot and really j got into character too. So he got a pick at the brain. And that's that's also much. just part of because he is a method actor and that's part of his method is to to mm -hmm. get in there. Yeah. And and since he had the reference of the character, and he was still around and he could talk to them, then uh, mm -hmm. he was able to shape his performance based off of him. And I think it's it's pretty damn accurate to how the. How yeah. the guy really well, is. I know in the behind the scenes, the one sister said that she was looking off the distance and she's like, what's Dickie doing over there? And but it was turn really around, it's Christian Bell. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I, that's also not always the case, too, with, with uh, mo movies where someone's p portraying a real well, person. Yeah. Not everyone has the, the reference. Mm -hmm. yeah. to, uh, well, the Aviator's a good example. There's uh, I, I was studying Johnny Depp a lot because he's done a lot of movies based on real characters. Um, Two differences. One big one he did Ed Wood, and there's no footage at all on Ed Wood. And they pre him and Tim Burton pretty much had to make that up in their head. Mm -hmm. And he uh, he 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 went off three things th that made Ed Wood his Ed w interpretation of Ed Wood is blind optimism of Ronald Reagan, enthusiasm of the Tin Man, and Casey Kasem. <laughs> <laughs> and and th those three characters pretty much made up what Ed Wood is in the movie. Do we know Ed Wood was anything like that? I highly doubt it. No, yeah. But, and then... But it made for a damn good movie, and it's like this yeah. would... And then, well, then you look at another th thing he did was uh, Fair and Loathing in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. where he played Hunter S. Thompson, and he lived with him, and he followed him around every day for six months. And j just those two different attacks, and both great performances, yep. which... Which we could even look to non-method actors... Right. turning out great performances. One that comes to mind is Jeffrey Rush as David Shine. Hefgott or Helfgott and Shine. Shine. Yeah. It's, no. it's one of those. And he's and he's f like famously quoted as saying that he he stays away from the method act acting because what what if my best performance happens happens at the craft services table? Then I'm screwed. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna be, I wanna be able to turn it off so that I can turn it on when it matters actually. Yeah. Uh -oh. And that's a whole that's a whole different balance because you're trying to be this be this character and be the but you also have the added weight of this is a real person. Yeah. That's where the director comes in now too. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. uh, Terry Gilliam talks about fear and loathing where he would he built the environment where Hunter S. Thompson could be in. So Johnny Depp's character could just be Hunter S. Thompson, just be be what you are mm -hmm. in that environment. And I I think that, that leads to like interesting methods by directors of how to even how to approach certain actors, like a yeah. method actor or mm -hmm. create the environment to recreate something. I mean that's definitely the director's job to figure out how 
that actor particularly works yep. um, because if it is a method actor and they need if that actor feels the absolute need to study the person get their nervous twitches little things that make them them to portray that person real that's one observing there's another thing just method of actually doing everything that person has done in their life to have a different understanding but you can also protect the actor if they don't do it method to just let them sit down and have a conversation observe them because you're not taking on that person you're seeing their habits but you're you were casted as an actor for a reason whether it was just a visual representation because you guys look similar which i believe was the case for the fighter and um for secretary which i'll be talking about later but <laughs> totally different reason um but you know, that similarity you can also just see how they interact and they can take parts of them but they're still being themselves as an actor or actress yeah i want to say i want to say like, like that's one of the hardest things for a director to do is just to just to cast an actor who they can believe in and like they can work with to portray the person and uh i was going to talk about uh jamie fox and ray uh you know he was he was casted by taylor hackford who was just looking for the right person that kind of looked like charles ray and jamie Jamie happened to have that pers like that personality and the the look for it, and then uh, they threw Fox into this. He he's a very big metho methodical actor, so it just goes back to what you were saying, Katrina. And you know, uh, Jamie Fox with with Taylor Hackford spent hours looking at film footage of Charles Ray, and it's hard to play someone who's been blind since age seven. So you know. He, uh, Jamie Foxx also put on blinder glasses that would render him blind for 14 hours a day on shoots and he just got everything, every moment down of Charles Wright, the way he spoke, the way he walked, the way he talked, just everything. Uh, and it just, it's just one of the hardest things to do, so, no. yeah. I'd, yeah, I completely <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just like, okay, Tom got the no, message down, said, right? Then I did. I'm so fast. Boom, we're done. Like, no, I'm not done. No, no. But <laughs> you, said, you said Charles Ray a couple times instead did of I? Charles. So yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I'm so sorry. It's okay. No, we totally and that's got the it. Thing, that's another Everyone's thing, thing too. It's like they spent hours and hours mimicking this man and creating this man, but at the end of the day, what? whose story do you – do you really care to remain faithful to the character? I'm, I it's mean, it's like, what story do you want to tell? Yeah, because at a certain point, you do want to tell his story because mm -hmm. that's that's why you wanted to make this movie. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think some of the best stories are the ones that aren't faithful to the character. Yeah. Because when when they do kind of go off, when the character, especially like the, the dead guys, when somebody makes a movie about a dead guy, it's usually pretty good. Mm -hmm. I don't think. Uh, King George would be too happy about King's speech if he saw it. <laughs> no, yeah. I, that's just... I, yeah, he I, does kind of come off a little pompous, pompous and arrogant and the arrogant even and though he needed needed some help. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I mean, and then how do, you, how do you take on that when you just have history? I mean, yeah. you just have uh, written material of what that person's life was, the yeah. logs. I mean, and history is only history because of the people who decided to write it down. So you're only going to have certain sides of the story, not an overall mm -hmm. aspect. So with like the King's Speech and King George, it's just, all right, how do you cast for that, really? Yeah. And it's and if, with historical <clears throat> events, it's all relative to who's telling the story, too, I, I would say. Yeah. If, if there was an American director telling that story, it would probably come off a little different. Well, it's just like every every story changes. If I told you a story and then you told her a story, it already yeah. changed. By There's time a certain yeah, cer mm -hmm. at a certain point it gets diluted, and it's not a, maybe what it was before. The game of telephone, yeah. and then a and then lot you have the one asshole who changes it on purpose. Oh yeah, <laughs> this guy. Yeah, there that's, we go. That's when, the direct, that's when the director doesn't follow the actual historical event. Like, exactly. Wait, I got this, this, and this information. Who'd you get that information from? Um, that person. Well, that explains everything. <laughs> Mr. Mary. Back on that though, I mean, the, I was thinking about Michael Mann because when he did Public Enemies, he reshot everything where the actual events happened, which I find extremely interesting because then he, he would show like Johnny Depp, like, well, this is what happened over here. He almost had full control of telling the actual history and then putting something into Johnny Depp's mind of, oh, this is how Dillinger did it. Because it was how man thought he did it. It mm -hmm. had nothing to do with how, how Johnny Depp really became John Dillinger. It, mm -hmm. He really had no say in it. And that's probably why that movie isn't that good. 
but <laughs> yeah, because there wasn't enough give and take. There wasn't yeah. someone to f- fight back and maybe yeah, change stuff around. Okay. Um. <laughs> I before I guess before we close up or anything, I just I wanted to bring up. I, I think it's it's interesting that we're talking about this because uh, I, one movie that's coming out. I mean, relatively soon that just sticks out in my mind is. Uh, Steven Spielberg is going to do Lincoln with Daniel Day Lewis, yeah. and it's just, it's just going to be interesting to see how they do it with oh, that yeah. because it's all history. You know, he's going to listen to the Gettysburg Address thirty-five times, <laughs> <laughs> and he'll be Lincoln. He's going to go off, he's he's going the, off the movie out. The Conspirator right with Redford. <laughs> I don't think that would matter. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's. I mean, the, the, these movies are out there. It, it seems like every mm-hmm. movie is based on a true story in some. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, except, for, I mean, except for horror movies are never based on a true story even though they <laughs> so. any movie called The Haunting in insert town or something uh, Haunting in Connecticut yeah. it's not I, hate, I absolutely hate that well but so, mean, some of those are based off books which even yeah. I mean Stephen King those are based yeah. off books oh, so know, they have yeah. a reference well, where I'm, they still yeah. Stephen King might not be exactly happy with what they're doing with yeah, it yeah that's very true yeah. Stephen and King is famously didn't it, like so. um, Stephen King famously didn't like The Shining yeah. But I, I guess he grew to like it later on in life. I don't know. Because yeah. he probably realized it's a great movie. And yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, the, he goes, and he got paid big time. <laughs> <laughs> and the one thing that we really didn't touch on, I mean, all of these, like, realistic characters and so forth, they're humans. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. like, with the film that I picked was Secretariat, which is based off of a horse. Yes. I mean, how do you direct a horse? And um, it's just kind of strange how you I have to cast that. I think that's with the supporting cast but of people. It's absolutely the supporting cast that played the owner, the trainer, and everything like that. But, I mean to cast a horse and yeah. just uh, reading stuff with uh, Ronald Wallace, who was the director, I mean, to cast the horse, I mean, he brought his horse trainers and everything like that, and it was to see what horses interacted with his main character, which was um, Diana Lane. So, the easiest uh, to of just the best relationship. Best, probably, best relationship yeah. and so forth, but he, uh, he goes the way that he wanted to cast Secretariat, which was Big Red. Um, okay. Real, the horse itself, the real horse, was long shot um, because of the interaction, it was the eyes. The eyes were of that horse was the most powerful, he thought, for extreme close-ups. Mm-hmm. So it was just kind of cool, a little, even with animals and directing that aspect, um, life-death situations. But That's another instance, too, where you, you're not really you, caring if you offend the horse. Yeah, you yeah, can't offend the horse. <laughs> yeah, you can't offend the horse. Yeah, I'm just going to make this horse look cool as it's clearing the gate. <laughs> but, yeah, and then, and then you, you involve a, bu- a bunch of other horses and then you involve real jockeys. I mean, yeah. it's probably more dangerous than most action flicks because yeah. you have to recreate a race. And horses break legs, jockeys die, they get trampled. And so it's just of that whole precaution and so forth. But you're still representing a Triple Crown winner and a Triple yep. Crown mm-hmm. owner. But it's still like portraying realistic people, even realistic characters, whether I, they're human yeah. or not. That's always that's, that's always the goal, even with a, a movie that's not based on fact at all. You're still trying to create real people, and I think that's where they always remain the same. Mm-hmm. Right. Whether it's yeah. hyping it up a little bit more, mm-hmm. so we get the instinct more or not, or if it's you know too downplay, you kind of lose that connect. So you have to make it somewhat hyper-realistic than just pure out realism, because... Yeah. You're shortening yeah. someone's entire life in an hour and a half to two hours of time. Mm-hmm. I think it's that, that fine line of messing with the truth. Yeah. That kind yeah. of... Look at... Uh, mess. The but social network's a good yeah. one, too. Yeah. Yeah. Mark Zuckerberg yeah. may not be happy Yeah, none of them are happy about it. <laughs> <laughs> Which, who knows how highly fictionalized it is. They say it is, but that's... Well, that, that's, that's not one that was based off of a book. That yes, that that's adapted what off. Of, so there's that's two highly, different stories. Yeah, so the guy yeah. that wrote the book told that's, his story, yeah, and then somebody read the book and told a different story twisted, yeah. off of that. Yeah. Again, back yeah. to the game of telephone. And and Mark Zuckerberg comes off like a, a real asshole in that movie. Mm, yeah. I, I, isn't he kind of in real life? Or, no, well, mind, well, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> 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 Goldman just that, that, deleted off Facebook. Well, I guess yeah. I guess just to sum it up, the. The director's just, it's all about choices for the director. Does he, how faithful does he want to remain to these characters? Whose story does he, like in the instance of the fighter, it almost turned into more of Christian Bale's story than of Mickey Ward's story at certain points. I, I did have one last one okay. because uh, cause you're talking about the director making choices. The Donnie Brasco, Mike Newell, um, Al Pacino was talking to Joe Pistone, who is real life Donnie Brasco. Mm-hmm. And Pacino decided to start wearing a hat and start wearing kind of played down clothes. 
And Pistone told him that the real lefty was straight Italian. He always dressed very nice, slick back hair, red suits. And Mike Newell, that was initially his original vision. Mm -hmm. And he went up to Pacino and asked him, why are you doing this? Because you know it's going to change the character. And Pacino said, I want to make him more likable. Because if I play it down, play it down more and have a guy with a hat, you like him a little more. And Newell followed that, and another successful choice, I think. Yeah. I mean, there there's things that you have to change to make a person likable or right. have the audience draw to care about them. It doesn't sometimes. necessarily have to be likable too, but you well, have to find likable, something just, where he's yeah, you know, invested to keep watching him. Yeah, yeah it, it's got to be a choice to to draw the audience and empath and for the audience to empathize a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So. Empathize, hate, love, and in any way possible. Just them. yeah, <laughs> just in, just have, have a strong relate. physical. Uh, I'm sorry, emotion, con emotional connection to uh, to the character. Yeah. So in closing, just steal everything. Steal everything. <laughs> yes. Use what you got, uh, and it's just, it's all choices. So. I will just say too that um, just because a redneck. Says Careful. that says that his house is haunted. It doesn't make it a true story. So that, <laughs> <laughs> and, on a, and on a side note, I'd like to I'd like to just say check uh, check your local theaters in a couple months for my new f uh, documentary film. It's called it's titled The King and I. <laughs> it's about my wild weekend in Vegas with the ghost of Elvis Presley. Um, I swear, I swear, it it really happened. Trust me. <laughs> based on based on a true story. <laughs> Thanks. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>